Hello, and welcome to day 18 of the Ability event. I'm Joseph Jones of the Harkin Institute, and I'd like to thank you for joining us for this event today and all the events that you may have been a part of leading up to today, which is our 18th day of celebrating the Ability event. Happy Friday. As you are probably well aware now, Fridays are Arts Happy Hour here at the Ability event. And today's Arts Happy Hour is with Leroy Moore, who is the founder of Crip Hop Nation. And we're really excited for today's presentation and conversation. We're glad that you could join us uh, today and hope that you'll be able to be a part of the presentations and programs that will go out for the next couple of weeks. We look forward to celebrating the 30th anniversary of the Americans with Disabilities Act with you now and looking toward the next 30 years. I hope you'll enjoy today's Arts Happy Hour with Leroy Moore. Again, have a great day and thank you for joining us. All right, hello everybody. Welcome to day 18 of Embracing a Difference Globally, the ability event. Every day this week we've been having discussions with speakers from around the U.S. about intersection hey, bridges. Yes, can you hear me? No, your audio is really bad. Oh, okay, let's try this. What about now? Do you happen to have headphones? Yes, I... Right. Sorry, everyone, if you give us a few minutes. Just gotta grab those, just gotta grab those headphones. What about now? Oh, much better. Thank you. Way better. All right, perfect. Sorry about the inconvenience, everybody. All right, let's get started. So welcome to day, to day 18 of Embracing a Difference Globally, the Ability event. Now, every day this week, we have been having discussions with speakers from around the U.S. about the intersection of race and disability. I am Samuel Bannerman, a graduate of the Rehabilitation and Addiction Counseling Program. I will be a facilitator for this event. Now I'm gonna go ahead and give you a brief description of myself and my environment. I identify as an African male. I am currently sitting in my living room at my workstation. So I have two computer screens. In the background of me is a couch and a wall art. To my right, I have a window that is shut because it's 84 degrees out. And so I have the AC going. On my left, you, you can see, but there's a stove and countertops. And so, yes, that's my environment. All right, so moving on today. Today I'm proud to introduce our Friday happy hour with arch speaker, Leroy Moore. Leroy F. Moore Jr. is a founder of the Crip Hop Nation. He is the author and one of the founding members of National Black Disability Coalition. And he is also an activist around police brutality against people with disabilities. So after we show a quick after we show a clip of Leroy, during the clip, if you have any questions, please make sure to leave your questions in our chat box. And I will be able to, you know, read those questions off and get them answered. And so please join me, welcoming Leroy Moore, and remember to put your questions in the chat box. Thank you. Hi everyone, I'm not Leroy but uh, Leroy is having some problems logging on. And so um, I, we don't have him on Zoom yet. And I am very sorry for this inconvenience. Um, sometimes our presenters have problems um, logging on. 
um, to Zoom. So while we're waiting for him, if anyone would like to put some questions in the Q&A for um, Leroy, you can go ahead and please do that now. And just um, hold on a few minutes for us um, while we're waiting for Leroy to get logged on. Thank you. Hello, everyone. This is Kathy Johnson. I think um, I'll just take this moment to review what our next schedule is for um, the upcoming week so that you all are aware of our fantastic presentations coming up. So on Sunday, we have an interfaith um, presentation that, if I have my dates right, is with Reverend Peterson, or I'm sorry, it is uh, the Zen Buddhist Meditation with uh, Reverend Jennings, my apologies. On Monday, our Abilities X Talk is with Carolyn Casey, C-A-S-E-Y for our interpreter. And Carolyn uh, is the inspiration behind the Valuable 500 uh, Incorporation that encourages disability, um, businesses that uh, are global around the world that to hire people with disabilities. She's just truly an inspiration um, and we look, really look forward to her Ability X Talks. That's 9 a.m. on Monday. On Tuesday, we have a presentation with the Zero Project based out of Vienna, Austria. And our student facilitator that day will be Caitlin Wall. Dr. Amy Knopf and I were able to attend uh, three of the Zero Project conferences that highlight projects from around the world that are doing amazing work um, with people with disabilities in the area of political involvement, employment, and education. And so uh, literally, I believe there's you know, 180 countries that are involved in the Zero Project. That's our Lunch and Learn at noon on August 18th. On Wednesday, August 19th, we will be having another presentation on the US-China Deaf Project. This last week, we talked about K-12 education. And this upcoming week, we will be talking about uh, higher education in China. So we'll look forward to that with our interns and visiting scholar again, who are on this presentation. On Thursday, August 20th, we will be having speakers uh, from out in Washington, DC share about disability policy on an international level in Cody, C-O-D-Y, and Charles Collette, K-E-L-L-E-T-T. -T. Those are our two presenters then. Vincent Peterson will be our uh, facilitator for that. And then on Friday, August 21st, we will have Tai Li Hua, who is a performer from uh, China, who will be sharing about dance in China uh, through an organization that has all deaf dancers to complement our Wednesday events. So thank you. We look forward to having you join us next week also. Dr. Knopf, is there an update? I, I want to apologize to our audience, but we are unable to get Leroy onto Zoom. And I am so very sorry. I'm not sure what has happened, um, but. You know what? That's okay. And I think we have um, a number of people. Amy, could we do this today? If people are interested, those that want to stay on, we could have a conversation with our attendees. And we invite you to, can we switch everyone so that everyone can turn on their videos? And if anyone, this is really the midway point through our 30-day event. We're sorry Leroy's not here, but you're here as our participants. So if there's anyone that would like an opportunity to share feedback and what we've been doing so far, or to share a reflection on the 30-year anniversary of the ADA, let's still make this a happy hour. You're here, we're here, we're still celebrating the ADA. So if uh, anybody wants to, please let us know in the chat and we can move you over for you to have an opportunity to share with us. 
some of you are people that have been a part of us um, for all of the events. So please let us know if you'd like an opportunity to speak. That would be any of our participants, Xiao Rong or Nick or Steve Anderson. Anyone would like to take a moment and share some feedback? Well, Amy continues to try and get Leroy. Or Sherry, Sherry Rademacher, I see you. We welcome you to join us. Okay, Steve Anderson. Taylor or Katie, can you move Steve Anderson over please to panelists so we can turn on his video? Steve, please come on board. You're the father of this whole event. Can you turn on your microphone and video? Microphone on. Hi, Steve. We just need your microphone. There you are. Yeah, it just took me a while to find out where the microphone was. It okay. is Friday afternoon after all. And it is a happy hour. So, Steve, we're in the middle of our 30 30- It is happy hour. <laughs> awesome, Steve. Steve, do you want to just share some words on your reflections from what we've had so far? Well, I, you know, I've attended every day. Every day. Every day, I mean, honestly, every day seeing I mean a person with a disability all my life, I'm learning something new every day. Yeah. And I'm especially uh, with this week talking about the intersection between race and disability, I think is so important to talk about because it's, it's, I mean, it's inexplicable that we're connected. And I just think the presentations have been great so far. Thank you. All right. Sam, do you want to hop back on? You're our student moderator. We can get you back on here and you could share a little bit from your reflections on this week. And Sam also does a little bit of dabbling in hip hop himself, which is <laughs> why I asked him to be our moderator today. Okay. So I was really excited for him and Leroy to have a conversation. Shoot. What do you think, Sam? Are you going to share some of your talent with us? Um. We you can't hear microphone. you, so I'm mute, but I just heard from Leroy. Hang on just a minute and we'll get okay. him on in a minute. But Sam, why don't you talk about your hip hop for Sam, can you take your microphone on? We still can't hear you. There we go. Sorry. Um, I couldn't unmute myself. I needed uh, permission. Okay. Um, I was going to say, um, well, first off, my kind of music is a little on a vulgar end. Oh. Um, <laughs> These are rated G. Yes, it's not rated G, but I have been doing it since 2009, the writing and the recording piece of it. And I would say that I thought it was a great idea to have this as a portion of it because recently with the mainstream hip hop culture, I've seen a lot of um, artists implement sign language in their visuals, mm. which has been really, I would say interesting to see, because for me, it's the first time seeing it. I first saw it about three years ago. Um, and so even, and one of the things I liked about it was that the songs weren't censored either. Mm. Yes, okay. and so they kept it as it was and the visual was made with um, interpreters doing the sign languages. And I thought okay. that was really, I thought that was really neat. And I thought it would be, and we've seen videos on the internet of interpreters being at concerts. Mm, yes. Yes, yeah, so that's also really cool. Um, overall, I think that 
well, I hope that within the next three to five years, we can see at least an interpreter box at the side of the screen for every music videos. Because mm -hmm. I myself, I don't understand how participants who are hard of hearing or deaf participate in, in, in music. And so I think that it would be cool to have that inclusion. Mm -hmm. um, if I do make it out of this little bubble to a bigger bubble, I think as, a, as an artist personally, that is something that I can see myself implementing in my craft at all times. Awesome. Uh, you make a really good point that accessibility, even in, in all arts, right. um, it, it is so fun to go to um, events where they, they are there. All right. I'm going to say goodbye, everyone, because Leroy, you're here. Thank you, Sam. Thank you, everyone, for your patience. Welcome aboard, Leroy. Hello, everybody. So sorry I'm late. <laughs> it's in Zoom after Zoom after Zoom. No problem, Leroy. Um, if you can just introduce yourself and tell the audience a little bit about yourself and if you're going to do some performance, and then we all have a Q&A with you after. Okay. All right. So this is Leroy Moore. I'm in Berkeley, California. I've been here since the late, well, since the early 90s. I was in San Francisco in 91. Um, before gentrification and after gentrification, I was booted to Berkeley. So I've been here ever since. And a little about me, you probably read the bio, but I'm, um, an activist, been an activist since the late 80s around police brutality and people with disabilities and also, you know, dealing with black and disability. Also, I'm a long-term member of Poor Magazine in Oakland and in the National Black Disability Coalition, Virginia Denham. And I started many organizations. First was um, Disability Advocates of Minorities Organization back in 1999. Then um, I co founded with a friend of mine, Sins Invalid. And Sins Invalid still up and running. And after Sins, well, before Sins, I also found me what's called Crip Hop Nation, which I do regularly now. And Crip Hop Nation is a national, is an international network of musicians with disabilities. Um, we've been around for 13, 14 years. We had chapters um, all, all around the world. Um, it was me, Keith Jones, and the late Rob Denois Temple, who started, and Keith Jones is still with us. Um, he's the co-founder. And yeah, that's me in a nutshell. And I wrote a couple of big things with Crip Hop on, 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 on this on the stage about, about the um about the release in a couple of weeks is that Crip Hop will be well a song will be in um, a Netflix movie coming out on August twenty sixth called Rising Phoenix and it's a documentary talking about the Paralympics. And Quip Hot did the last song of that documentary. So the song is going to be released on the 20th, and the film will be on Netflix on the 25th or the 26th. So that's huge for Quip Hot. Um, the next big thing that, that's happening in Quip Hot is that. Um, 
we are looking for a house to buy in Berkeley because we want to have um, a public place where people can come and look at the visual arts, um, also look at um, a music studio and and it's going to be a two-four kind of house, two-story kind of house. So first story will be accessible to everybody, and where we can have meetings and you know art um, events and music events, and the upstairs will be a living quarters for. Um, Quip Hop founders, myself, and Keith Jones. So that's the long um, goal. We're going to start um, a campaign soon to raise funds and raise awareness for that. So, so that's, that's Quip Hop. And um, we, we have the new chapter in Wales. Um, we just did a the workshop in Wales, so um, they're, they're going to put together a Quip Hop chapter. So, and, and also Quip Hop is going to be in a hip hop book coming out um, next year. So yeah, so things are happening for Quip Hop. And before I do any performance, I just want to do open it up to see if people have questions or comments. Nope. Yeah, hang on just a minute, Leroy. Sam is getting ready to put on his camera. All right. Um, you're still on mute, Sam. All right, uh, we don't have any questions so far, but I would like to ask you about um, becoming an activist for police brutality. How did that come about? Hello, when I was young and um, grade school, um, I used to go to my father's um, house meeting. My father was an activist. This was back in the late 70s. And because um, being in my father's meetings, they talked about police brutality of black men and a lot of the time those men were disabled. So I got involved with, you know, being in my father's meetings. And the first case that I really got a lot of law in my own was in 1984-85 with the killing of Eleanor Bumpers. And Eleanor Bumpers is from New York. She was an elderly black elder with a mental health disability and um, she was having a crisis and, um, and the, the police was called and the police knocked on the door and shot her. And that was the first case that I was involved in on the streets protesting and going to hearings and um, yeah. So from there, I've been in um, the activism around police brutality against people with disabilities. So I saw groups come and go. I saw movements come and go from October 22nd. October 22nd is an annual event of stopping police brutality. And they had chapters all over the country. Um, I saw the, um, the, the organization, the Mothers Against Police Brutality in New York, and now we have Black Lives Matter. So 
I saw movements come and go, and the issue is still here with us today. All right, um, my next question then will be a two-part question. So the first one is, how did you become interested in hip hop? And then the second question is, did hip hop around the 90s, did that really influence um, your action on police brutality as well? So I got involved in hip hop because I saw hip hop on the streets. I grew up in the 70s. So in New York, hip hop was on the corners before it got on MTV. So I saw that I went to Cyphers in the Bronx, Brooklyn. So I saw it, you know, live there. So when when it got when it got on MTV and with mainstream, I knew about it. And you know, the first song I heard was Rapper's Delight from the Chicago game. And it came out in nineteen seventy nine. So so since since that time, you know, I really loved hip hop and I really wanted to push hip hop to be more in, to be more accessible to people with disabilities because when you know when when hip hop was on the corner in New York I saw women hip hop artists, I saw um artists on crutches break dancing, so I saw the the diversity of it. And when when it got more corporate and got more commercialized, that's that's when I saw the lack of diversity. So um the uh, next question, the police brutality, you know, influence clip hop that's a good question because um clip hop is twelve years old. So when um, police brutality first was, well, it's not, it's not a first, but when it got really heated with Mike Brown's case, um, Clip Hop did a CD, a hip hop CD of hip hop artists with disabilities talking about police brutality. And so we did that CD and we did a film documentary called Where is Hope? Police Brutality Against People with Disabilities. So we did that all, you know, during and before the Michael Brown shooting. So, so, so yeah, hip hop is, I mean, hip hop is very political. You know, most of our songs, most of our projects um, come from a political lens because myself, Keith Jones, are activists. So we wanted to use Crip Hop to really talk about not only our stories, but the politics and the racism and ableism in hip hop that keep us from, you know, being part of mainstream hip hop. Yeah, hey, uh, to follow up, I definitely agree that Hip hop is definitely a uh, ableist culture. Um, it's also really gender specific as well. And I'm hoping there can be more, like I said earlier, inclusion with the whole, you know, um, culture itself. Cause I think there's a lot of express expression that needs to be done culture wise. And I think a lot of other people has voices that needs to be heard. Um, we have a question from Elise Knopf and she said, hi, Leroy. Um, she wants to know how many artists are involved with Crip Hop Nation? Yeah, you know, I want to go back to your statement, you know, hoping that it'd be more inclusive. I, I think um, we got to go deeper than just hoping you need to push the system. And that's what Crip Hop does. Crip Hop pushes the system through our journalism, because I, I'm also a journalist, well, you know, we push it through, you know, our music and our, you know, films and stuff like that. 
So, you know, I, I, I say that because systems don't change because we wish them to change. Systems change because we push them and we make them to change. So saying that, um, you know, Quip Hop is a loose network, so we have artists that come in, we go out, but we we have we have over like two hundred artists internationally, and, and I say over two hundred because, like I said, you know, Quip Hop the artists come in and come go out, but the core people that you know bring it together and make it stay together is myself, Keith Jones on the late rock, you know, his temple, you know, Pinky from Germany. Um, yeah. And then also Rodney Rodney on um, um, Uganda. So those are the people that really, you know, keep it going. But really, when it comes down to it, it's myself, Keith Jones, and Pinky that really, you know, keeps it going. We, we do projects, you know, um, we do, you know, journalism, and we do books. So there's, there needs to be a core group of people that is always there that really, um, shapes our projects and shapes our education and shapes the movement because quip hop is a movement you know we can see that because there's chapters you know going around and there's other artists that come in that really want to bring quip hop to you know their their work so so it it's, it's really obvious that hip hop needs to be here, and not only our hip hop, but our education and our politics. Thank you for that. Uh, we have another question from Steve Anderson, and Steve is wondering how did audiences initially respond to you and your art? Yeah, um, hip hop in the beginning, we, we got a negative response. Matter of fact, um, People used to dog our um, emails, our songs. Our first um, conference was Clip Hop and Homo Hop. So bringing disabled hip hop artists to queer and gay hip hop artists. And we had that at UC Berkeley. And we had so many hate emails, hate calls. Um, people tore down our posters. So yeah, so you know, at first, you know, people thought that we were, you know, putting down hip hop by expressing our disability. Um, but you know, we we kept on going. And it's now been twelve, thirteen years, and it's it's interesting because. Some of those hip hop journalists that um, that, that put us down are, are not doing the journalism journalism no more. Yeah. But but Quip Hop is still here, so that it tells you something. Um, Steve Anderson also wanted to know, um, as a follow up question, are there any chapters in Minnesota? No, there's not. There should be. And if you want to make one, make one. <laughs> what does it take to start a chapter? <laughs> very, very little. You know, you can. You know, we we all kind. Of, we all, um, you know, communicate through social networking. You know, I'm always on Facebook. You know, it's like um, people's like, why do you stay on Facebook and Twitter so much? It is. <laughs> networking with, right. with with other quip hop artists. So right. you know, yeah, I started chapter in in your own state. You know, hook, hook, hook up with me on Facebook and Twitter. I can show you the um, website. I can show you, you know, the 
the goals and the mission statement of Crip Hop, and boom, you have the chapter. You know, Crip Hop doesn't, um, we, we don't really, you know, um, heavy hand our chapters because you know, as, as a person in your state, in your country, in your city, you know what needs to be done. Right. So, we, you know, we just provide, you know, the structure and mission statement. You know, we, you know, when, when we do like events or, or uh, CDs, you know, we invite artists to come on board to do that with us. Mm -hmm. You know, it also help promote, you know, the Quip Out chapter because, like I said, I do um, journalism, so I write for. You know, poor magazine, I think for the San Francisco big newspaper, you know, this couple of months, Quip Hop has been in, in the New York Times, has been on NBC, so we can, you know, we can provide, you know, um, media and promotion. But really, you know, the chapter is up to you. That's what I said when I was doing the um, Zoom presentation in Wales last week. It's like, yeah, it's your chapter. You know, you, you do what you think needs to be done in Wales, and we can back you from here. All right. I like that. So we have a couple more questions, but first... I think the people would like an encore, so could you perform a song for us, or two, or three, or four? Oh my god. Okay, well, what do you got? I, I'm, I'm a poet, so... All right. Yeah, so I, I write poems. In my, in my, um, my songs are produced by Keith Jones. And Keith Jones, what 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 we do in Crip Hop to to, um, to give you an idea of how a song becomes a song is that um, for for example, take take the song that's going to be on Netflix in a couple of weeks, which is going to be huge. Um, but that that song, you know, of course. The president, you know, got in contact with us and said, "Okay, Leroy, can you pick out three artists that can be on this song?" So I went, I went to the table, and I, you know, I, I, I had um, a structure of which artists do I pick from. The one, one, one structure is, you know. Is, is is the artist really down with Quip Hop? Has, has the artist stayed in contact with me? You know, you know, do, do I have a good communication with the artist? That's right. one thing. Because if I can't communicate with you, then and you, there's there's no way that we can do business. So that, that was the first structure. The second is you know, you know what what does the artist do? You know, you know, most of the artists is on um, the musicians, but some of the artists are producers, like Keith Jones. So he's a producer and he's an activist, and he sees the whole mission of hip hop. So that there's another um, item that that I took by picking our artists. And the last is, of course, you know, um, how, how dope that I think your song is, your songs, and, and how political it is. Because I don't, you know, Queer Pop is not here for a, a pity party. You know, right. so I really look at the song lyrics, you know, is it political? Is it saying something? Is it saying something with a this is really justice form format. You know, I, I yeah, I don't want you know overcoming kind of kind of song. So those those are the those are the structures I look at. Then right. then then I pick the artist. 
So so we we paid Tony Hickman from Houston, and Tony is a slammer in her her songs and her politics, and we stay in contact constantly. So Tony Hickman, um, Keith Jones, of course, because you not only that he's a co-founder, is that his his lyrics and his politics is slamming. So I want him on it. And George Tragic, George Tragic um, is a quip hop artist and you know he always challenges the mainstream music industry about his disability. So I wanted that kind of message in there. So those are the three artists that I picked and it was a whole process of picking them. And once I picked them, then they got in contact with the people in, uh, in the Paralympics to put on a song because I trusted them. I was like, okay, you, you guys do it. You know, I, I don't I don't need to be a heavy hand always looking at, you know, big inches of, of what you do. I trusted them. I trusted their artwork. I trusted their vocal, you know, so I said, okay, go ahead. And that's, and, and that's how the song um, has, you know, becoming your, your, hear that when it's um, released on the 20th of this month, yeah. So I can... Sorry, go ahead. So if you, if you want me to do a poem, I can do that, or... Yeah, we can hear something. Any performance works. All right. So I'm going to pick this one. It's called The Rules. And it's a poem song. You know, I, I'm more in a tradition of Langston Hughes. And Langston Hughes was a blues poetry, a blues poet. So most of my songs are poem songs. And I got that from Langston Hughes. So this is called The Rules. My birth broke the rules. Since then, society gave me the blues. Tired to make stories out of it, like Langston Hughes. Thought I had all the answers, others hiding the clues. My birth broke the rules. Black, disabled, and poor, three strikes before I come out of the baseball dugout. It's just a friendly game of baseball, right? My birds broke the rules in the moss pit with my stale boots. Kicking, 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 screaming, I will not lose. Welcome to my game with my own rules. My birds broke the rules. Free me up to turn blind blues into crip hop. Black blind man with an Uzi pop pop. My birth broke the rules. Black disabled and poor three strikes before I come out of the baseball dugout. It's just a friendly game of baseball, right? My birds broke the rules in the mosh pit with my stale boots. Kicking, 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 screaming, I will not lose. Welcome to my game with my own rules. My birds broke the rules. Free me out to turn blind blues into crip hop. Black by a man with an Uzi. Pop, pop. Ha, 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 can't stop constantly changing the rules, picking back my blues. This time people will win and the system will lose. 
Wow, I really like that one. I like the kick in, kick in, kick in, I would not lose part. Mm -hmm. um, powerful words. We have about, I'll say about 14 minutes or so left, but we have two important questions. And so um, let's try to breeze through this as quick as possible. But the first one is, how many deaf people are in Crip, Crip Hop Nation? Deaf? Yes. So we have, He's a Chinaman, and he's from the UK. He's one of the um, one of the grandfathers of, of deaf hip hip hop in the UK. And so he's been around. We have Wawa from DC, and Wawa is the grandfather of deaf hip hop in the US. And he's also an actor, and um, yeah, so he's been around. So you know, those are the two major. Um, we have Show Rock, Show Rock from DC, and I, I interviewed him. You know, um, like the first two years of Crip Hop, and he did a song for one of our CDs. So, yeah. All right, so three main individuals. Uh, the next question is, what do you think would be the best way to make sure that the positive movements in our communities across America will continue and not die out? Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, and that question was from Nick Odette. Odette, hopefully I'm saying it right. And a previous question was from Zyron Zhu. I'm sorry if I'm not saying your names right. But yes, this question is from Nick, and he wants to know about the movements across, positive movements across communities. Yeah, you know, positive movements, you make sure that they don't die out, is A, always, you know, bring young people into the movement, you know? And, you know, I have to be honest, Quit Bob is, you know, it's one of the hard, hard things with Quit Bob to be in young disabled you know artists into into crip hop because crip hop is not a, a job it's not you know you you're not gonna get a paycheck i i you know crip hop is on ssi dollars so i don't get a paycheck so it's so it's, it's hard to attract people especially now because the you know the um the cost of living is so much, so it's, it's hard to um, get people that would work for, you know, the passion of it, not the dollars of it. So, and, and another, another thing is to keep the movement going, is always do, do what's fun for you, you know. Um, Quip Hop, you know, always has done what, what we want to do. You know, so what's important. So when, when we did the police brutality movie, you know, it, it, it stirred up a lot of entrance in Crip Hop. <laughs> so it was easy to do because people wanted to do it, you know. Yeah. And, and also, it, 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 it's one of the first movies out there that's done by and for people with disabilities. That's one thing that Crip Hop does, is that most of our products are like the first of its kind. You know, the police brutality mixtape. We did um, what's called on Gender Crip. Um, we did an event where we had um, non-binary people and women you know, got together and did a whole CD and event around that. I think it's one of the first of its kind in hip hop because you very rarely see disabled women or disabled non-binary people doing hip hop. So, yeah, so, you know, what what we do in the products that we do in the the events that we do are first 
prison time last last year between all African music musicians disabled on um, tour. So people from Africa that were disabled and musicians came here and we did a whole tour. I mean we did that on an SSI Tower budget. People came here, stayed in my little apartment, and we did a whole tour around the Bay Area. That's that's called dedication to 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 the movement, to yeah. to what we're growing, you know, because yeah. it, you know, it wasn't funded by MTV or, or Coca-Cola. <laughs> yeah. okay. um, one last question, Dan. Uh, well, before I ask this last question, I just want to remind our participants today to join us on Sunday at 9 a.m. Central Time for our Sunday interfaith session with Reverend Ocean Jennings, who is a deaf who is a deaf Buddhist monk. And then we we'll also I also want to make sure we have enough time to thank you, Leroy, for informing us. You know, this session was really educational, and I think a lot of us learned a lot today about not just what Crip Hop Nation is, but also you kind of create awareness for police brutality as well, specifically for people living with disabilities. And so we want to thank you for that. Our final question comes from Steve Anderson, and he said, thank you as well for being here. And he wants to know, when did you first get the art bug and what brought you to Crip Hop? Well, well, well first of all, I want to thank OD. OD kicks ass. <laughs> so thank you, OD. Um, what 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 brought me to Crip Hop? Like like I said earlier, you know, when um, Crip Hop came out the first time, I was I was in in the I was in in the hip hop. I was in the hard rock. I was used to, uh, <laughs> listening to ACTC and Ozzy Osbourne because I grew up in a white suburb, so I was really hardcore <laughs> punk. And, Rock, but when when hip hop came out in that first album, the Secret Hill Gang, I totally lit my script. So that's that's when I got into hip hop. And plus, at the time, rock was getting kind of weak. They they had new wave. I was like, what the freak is this new wave? <laughs> totally destroyed rock. So that's that that's how I got into hip hop. And what was the second? The second. One? No, the question was just when did you get the art bug, and then what brought you to crib hop? So, yeah. um, perfect. So uh, with seven minutes left, can we get another encore? Oh, okay. Have some bars for us, please. Let, let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Perfect. Um. Oh. I do I do a short one that really um talks about these times in the pandemic. Oh, perfect. And it talks and um, it's entitled We Can't Wear the Mask. Before COVID, the mask was not accessible. Today, my scooter can't fit at the table. My mask couldn't hide my disability. Forget your black respectability. Now we have COVID. Thanks, Sky Hennon and Sandy Yee for my mask. But will the police ask? Why are you wearing a mask before they tase me? The governor says, wear, wear your mask. Which one, I ask. Black re respectability or quip invisibility? Forced to pick your task. We can't wear the mask, even though now it is accessible, so we will stay inside. 
COVID and Paul Paul are waiting outside. Thank you for having me. Um, I think that's a good note to uh, end the session on. Thanks to everybody who showed up today. Leroy, thank you so much for your inspirational words. Thank you, Dr. Nav and SCSU for hosting this event again. And we'll see you all on Sunday at 9 a.m. Thank you. Thank Bye, you. Bye, Odie. <laughs>